morning, guys. How are you? This is Free Everyone International Radio, and I am joined by the lovely Melanie Winters from Neptune. And um, yeah, it's a great day. We had a ton of rain last night, so there's mm -hmm. rain, red, red rain everywhere. I know. My car is absolutely filthy. <laughs> I can imagine. I actually, we're a little bit late today because um, for some reason, I know I'm a girl, and I did actually do the whole Google Maps thing. Um, <laughs> But it took me to the wrong side of the building. <laughs> so I'm standing outside and looking up and I see the big sign saying Neptune and um, didn't know how to get in and I'm pressing all sorts of buttons. And uh, But it turns out that you have to come around the side of the building. Yeah, all the locales around the back of the building. Yeah. So but it's also appointment only here. Yeah. So you can't just yeah. rock up. You had that experience just the other day, didn't you? Yeah. You yes, had a client today. that was directed here. Yeah, came I just here and you came here and I wasn't here because I'm here from 8.30 in the morning until 12. Yeah. And then in the afternoons, I'm out visiting, doing appointments, templating votes. Well, and that's the client. Yeah, that's the whole point behind the yeah. business is that you go to them, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So they come to me to experience the beds. Yeah. For the Neptune Experience Center and partner. Oh, I've had the chance to lay down on a couple of those beds, and I'm telling you, <laughs> I could have stayed there like forever. <laughs> So Mel, it's been a long time. I mean, I've been away for a year and we have had quite a bit of interaction in the past 10 years, actually. Yeah. We've known each other for 10 years. Um, what brought you, for those that don't know Melanie, um, you've been here for how many years in total now? 13. Yeah. Yes, lucky for me, 13. Um, I, came, um, I came on holiday. I came to see two very special friends, David and Lucy Island, who both Deckers uniforms. And I came to spend some time with them. And I ended up staying forever. <laughs> but what brought you into the yachting side of things? Because were you into yachting in England, or was this just something that you sort of decided to? to I mean, you're not part of the yachting industry. No, no. Per se. I was working with uh, luxury cars. I was marketing for luxury cars and safety friends and Porsche in the UK for ten years, and then I came to Mallorca on holiday, and then David and Lucy gave me a job for the summer just a summer job because they were just launched their new business and I helped them design a brochure and I also did some sales for them and uh, they offered me a job and I went for um, Palmer Boatshire, the first one, and I did the stand for nine days because David was very busy working and so was Lucy, so that was, that was fantastic. So that was my first introduction to yachting and then one day David said, right, okay, um, we'll give you a job, you know, until you want to go back to England. So and he just dropped me off at a super yacht and said, off you go, do your thing. And I stood there for half an hour, plucking up the courage to go to my first boat. And then the rest is history. Now I go up to 130 meters without blinking. You know, it's just, you can talk to anyone maybe. But it was very, very nerve wracking. Really. I was going to say, because I don't, you don't come across as the kind of person that would ever be nervous of approaching anybody or anything for any reason. Oh no, I, yeah, I'm not good speaking in public, believe it or not. One to one is fantastic, but speaking in public, like getting up and doing a you know a speech or something like that, it's one of my pet hates. So, what have you noticed? I mean, as far as the industry goes, what have you noticed changing um, since you've been here? Because you actually have been not on the boats, but you know, sort of support. Yeah, uh, for supply the, the boats for yeah for like thirteen years. Um, I think the major shift that we've seen is there's a lot of a uh, new crew coming into the industry, and there's a high turnover of crew I think I think maybe people join the yachting industry with expectations that are maybe you know far too high I think they're going to come in and get a fantastic salary straight away and travel the world and you know they think it's so glamorous and it is glamorous you do go to glamorous locations and you, you know you do have a lovely life but it is hard work it is blood sweat and tears for people and I think some people maybe get a bit disillusioned by that and so there is a kind of a turnover um, I think more now than there is, and there's a lot more training involved as well. And you need to have a lot more, you know, tickets and qualifications and things now as well. So, where do you think this sort of fallacy comes from? The concept that it is just, you know, diamonds and roses, yeah. as it were. Like, who is who is giving that concept to the audience that are, are thinking about what they're going to do for their future? It's just a very glamorous, it looks like a very glamorous lifestyle. If you see you know, some of the super yachts, absolutely stunning. The sail yachts, the racing life, you know, everybody's very good looking, you know, handsome men, fabulous, gorgeous women. Um, 
and you know it looks very very glamorous and like I said it can be glamorous but also it is it's very hard work and a lot of the time if you're a steward you're actually downstairs scrubbing other people's toilets and I don't think some people come in newbies coming into the industry it's not their fault it's nothing to do with um, them it's just I think they need to understand how you know how difficult the job can be how demanding it can be the long hours and also if you look at things like um you know like deck hands and, and the safety elements of things and the jobs and you know you you progression all the way through to captain you know it's a long hard long hard slog would you, you say that the idea as well would you just say, say that the idea behind I mean, 10 or 15 years ago people were getting into the industry with the view to gradually sort of increase within the industry so you know a deckhand would come in or a stewardess for that matter with the concept that they did want to eventually become a captain because they had a love for the sea and they had a love for sailing yeah nowadays is that still the concept or is it just that they want to make quick money and they want to do some traveling and they think it's all you know i think it's a mixture of the two yeah. i think it's definitely a mixture of the two you get a lot of people coming from there you know overseas um who you know want their couple of years in yachting and then leave to do something else but um there's far more um in terms of education and in terms of training there's a lot more now that you have to do you know it's 20 years ago you didn't need you know so many tickets for this that and the other but now you do so it is you have to commit to yachting it's not just a, a holiday well and a lot of people do come and get very disappointed as well i mean yeah. you know there's it, so it's... many crew out there looking for jobs at them you know and and there's you know not all the jobs to go around so sometimes they get a bit disillusioned but all in all it's a fantastic industry and uh, well, that's what I've seen. It's just the crew turnover. Yeah. So a few years back, we actually worked together. We did. And we had a lot of fun. For <laughs> a year and a half, we worked together. Yeah. 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 No, it was Sirens. Really it was called. We were we were yeah. two of three to begin yeah. with because yeah, Miss Helen. Helen. Where's she working at actually, Helen? She's um she just joined Palmer Yacht Centre Palmer. Yeah. Yeah. She just joined it uh, two weeks ago. Wonderful, so, yeah, because there was a three of us sirens, yeah. and um, we had this company that did, I guess people call it a pub crawl, but it wasn't really a pub crawl, it was well, more of an excursion, it was like a treasure hunt around Santa Catalina. It was an event. <laughs> an event, yes, around Santa Catalina, and we had a lot of fun with that. I mean, we every did. week, or once a month, actually, yeah, once, yeah, a, once month, a month, we would come up with a great costume theme. I'm not a big costume person, and you were the costume person, oh, and yeah. um, you, oh, but the I love you theme. came up with. Yeah, I know we had, uh, I really had a lot of fun with that, because I love to be, love to be creative, yeah. and you do as well, um, and that was great, because we, I think we put a lot of places in Santa Catalina actually on the map. Yeah, literally, because we had maps. We had maps. <laughs> it was like, the first one was a treasure hunt, and we had um, eight bars around Santa Catalina area, and you got a treasure map and the stamp card, and you went to each one, and you had a tapas and a tipple in yeah. each one, T&T. T&T, oh, it was going to be T&T Thursday. T &T. And then you got your stamp card uh, stamped, and when you had all six or eight stamps, the first one was eight. Eight was the first one, yeah. Eight Way was too, too many. many too People many were bars. too drunk to make <laughs> You have a drink in every place, so yeah. it was a bit crazy. Um, but then you won the whole treasure chest at the end, yeah. which was, just there so were some fun. amazing prizes, yeah. and you know what? I gotta say, the businesses the in Santa Catalina, and there was other businesses as well that weren't in Santa Catalina yeah. that contributed to the prize box. Nautical businesses, yeah, and the islands that yeah. donated a case of wine every time we did it. Yeah, they had some wonderful support from that. Was an amazing yeah. prize box, wasn't yeah. it? I mean, Deckers contributed. Yeah. There was a whole pile. Yeah. Wine industry. Yeah. We used to have about 20, 20 prizes in the chest. Yeah. Number 12 wines, actually, as yeah, well. Yeah, so yeah. many. I know. So many. And all the bars gave a prize as well. So there was all yeah. of us. Yeah. And it was great. And we had charity angle as well, didn't yeah. we? We were uh, donating to charity as well. But it was, was a lot of work, though. It was a lot of work. For one night it was of fun and excitement and mayhem. Events managers, and it was <laughs> fantastic, but it was a lot of work. Yeah. We yeah. actually literally, I mean, for one night's work, we, we were treading the streets every single day. Yeah, and um, one month's worth, literally. Yeah, and we, we actually didn't really see that much no. money out of it. So, no. <laughs> but I think it was we, we made a lot of contact. Yeah, we made a lot of contact. Yeah. Um, and I think
think it was very beneficial and it ran its course. I think it was going, we did about eight events yeah. and I think it did come to a natural conclusion, I think, you know. Yeah. But I think we should do a Sirens rebooted. We should. We should do one off <gasps> event. You heard it here first. Maybe we're going to do a Sirens rebooted in Santa Catalina and uh, we'll do it Facebook Live. Yeah. We could Ooh, do something like fun. that. Yeah. And then we'll have a live on location at the end. Yeah. On radio. Wow. I think that would be awesome. That would be probably a nice one off most, event. <laughs> but that would probably be the most the discombobulated time. interview that I have ever done in my life <laughs> at the end, I'm sure. Talking to people that have been to all the bars with the tapas and tipple, and I'm not sure anybody would be able to understand them very much. <laughs> it would be entertaining at the very least. And that's what we're all about is entertainment. Yeah. And, you know information. So after we did that, you had a few other projects on the go too. Where did you head off after that? Um, I was doing a lot of um, marketing for myself, like freelance, um, working freelance, working with lots of, mainly yacht suppliers again, um, doing a little bit of sales and marketing for different tiers and companies, and then working just for myself as MWM services, because that is uh, my company, which is Melanie Winters Marketing, if you wonder what MWM stands for. Um, so yeah, I did that for a few years and then I missed, I actually missed yachting. I missed, I missed working with the boats. So I had an opportunity with um, a client from Oyster Yachts who was looking for a mattress. And I saw his, um, I saw an advert in the Islander magazine again that said um, for Neptune, and so I called them, spoke to the boss myself, and I said, would you be able to supply me uh, mattresses from Holland to, to, for my Oyster client? And they said, yes. And then Marcel phoned me and said, and I'm looking for a representative in the Balearic Islands. Would you be interested? Nice. So I thought about it for a while. And I thought, do I want to go back? Do I not want to go back? And I said, I'm going to go back. And so the rest is, um, I've been working with Neptune since November 2017. But wow. we opened the showroom, which we will show you later, <laughs> um, only two and a half months ago now. So we've got an experience since it's the first of its kind in New York, in the Balearic Islands, actually. Um, so I'm very excited about it. Well, actually, I have to say, I was able to try a few mattresses <laughs> and um, check out the pillows. And uh, it, it was really comfy. I, I have a full day of work today. And if I didn't have a full day of work today, I probably would still be. Lying on a mattress yeah. out there. <laughs> it's hard not to sleep at work. <laughs> I can Actually, I'm very busy, so I don't get time to sleep, but it's to be so nice to have a power nap in the afternoon. But before you came to Neptune, you actually worked at the Islander for a bit as well, didn't you? Yeah, I worked in the Islander. I've been working with the Islander for three and a half years now, so yeah. freelance. Um, I'm helping them with their distribution channels, and then uh, now I do their social media. So, yeah, I'm still heavily involved with the Islander magazine. I'm still there. Yeah, Simon, Simon's taken that magazine a long way. I mean, he's had it for how many years now? Six. Yeah, six it is years. six years. And it's now just... 200 pages. Yeah. And um, I think the last edition was, you know, 176 pages. And the Monaco Yacht Show was the biggest one that we've done. And it was, you know, there's blood, sweat, and tears go into it because it's a monthly publication. Yeah. So we have to do it every month. And I, I write a couple of articles in there as well. And we've got Victoria, we've got Shari who puts the whole thing together. Daniela does the, um, she's doing the social media. And um, and Damien, of course, sales manager extraordinaire. Yeah. Helen does the accounts and Simon is... Do you know what? He doesn't remember my name, so I'm never, I'm not even mentioning his because every time I see him, and he's just like, he does the hair for him, <laughs> but he completely forgets my name, so... Oh, mm. he's in his late 70s now. I don't care how old he is. <laughs> well, he's one of the... He's one of the coolest people I know. He's taught me a lot about sales, actually. He's, yeah. uh, he's, he's, he's old school sales, and I absolutely love that. Yeah. So I'm doing all the social media, and he's, uh, he's old school. What is their distribution over there? Like They, they reach pretty much, they're, they're the largest uh, magazine for yachting, probably in all of Spain. No? It's uh, 6,000 each month. Right. And we now distribute across the whole of the, um, the French Riviera as well. Wow. Yeah, so that's, that's great. Yeah, so that's great with um, Super Yacht Services and also um, then when we do Monaco Yacht Show or a Macho, they obviously put more more in and the Palmer Boat Show. 
um, stand for palm virtue for the last two years and so they um, produce more for that yeah. because everything is still personally hand delivered by the island team and that's nice it's a because full week it's a full week so the nice thing about that though is that you know that it's going directly to your client and to your customer yeah. as opposed to just yeah. sort of being i mean a lot of magazines they're great but there's a lot of waste they're just dumped on this yeah on the yeah and I, you know they say they have a distribution of a certain amount and then great you can print as many as you want but are they actually making it into the hands of the people that necessarily really need them yeah. and the nice thing about the islander is that it actually is hand delivered as you hand said. delivered yeah. with a smile and you have the best smile. and mads is now doing the delivery mads dios from ship shop yeah. She's doing the delivery now. She's taken over from me since I opened the okay. experience center. Unfortunately, yeah. I just don't have the time. Yeah. Because it's you know, it's a lot of time. So tell me about the experience center. So the experience center is the dream of Marcel Bachman, which is the, who is uh, the owner of Neptune in Holland. And he's been um he's had the factory now for 25 years, 26 this year. So what he doesn't know about mattresses isn't worth knowing. Before that, he went for younger. So he knows all um, about the yachts and he knows about mattresses. And the Balearic Islands is really the fact they do, um, is looking at the super yachts. So they've launched um, a website and a, a social media site, Facebook page called Super Yacht Mattress as well. So if you see Super Yacht Mattress, that's Neptune as well as Neptune because we can cater for all different um, sizes of boats, you know, from a small sail yacht or a contest or a fair line all the way up to. 130 meter. So, at the moment, it's just me here in, in Palmer, and uh, but we probably will take other people on later on as we get busier. And since working for them, I've done 25 boats. So I've worked with 25 boats, and a lot of them sail yachts, which is uh, which is fantastic. Nice. I'm working with Oyster, so I've done four oysters as well with them, the Oyster in Palmer. Yeah. So that's great. They recommend me to all their clients. And that's, I think, how to build it up, how to build. Do you find that it is something that should actually be done when there is a new build? Do you find that that is something that they should implement right? Because we are talking the ultra luxury market here. Yeah. You know, we're talking the difference between like a Lamborghini and a Honda Civic. You yeah. Know, when you're talking about, <laughs> <laughs> we're doing fishing boats and it, super yachts. It is the, yeah, it's the Lamborghinis of mattresses. <laughs> exactly. But I mean, even even when you're talking about building these things, I mean, you're not going to be sticking, um, you know, a high end a seat into a Honda Civic. You know, you're not going to be putting in the same luxury items into a, La a Honda Civic as you would a Lamborghini, for example. Yeah. So the same goes for you know luxury super yachts. Would you not be taking a look at making sure that? from the get-go, from the start, that they put in the high-end product like Neptune because there is nothing, nothing worse than a bad night's sleep and nothing better than a good night's sleep. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> That's a perfect description. Um, Neptune in Holland, are, I've talked to a lot of uh, Dutch manufacturers, of, you know, Dutch do a lot of them, um, build a lot of boats, so they are always in negotiations with um, with the manufacturers to put Neptune mattresses on, onto boats. So that's going well for them. Um, for me here, I'm gonna concentrate on um, the, you know, the day-to-day, -day, the day-to-day -day boats, the people that are coming and getting there, spending their time here, or you know, or looking after the crew. That's another yeah. thing we do. We do a lot of crew mattresses, which is very important to look after the crew. And um, I kind of we're going into the villa market now and homes as well. So we have new designs and we have a brand new bed that we can, the Palmer, it's called, which I'll show you later. And that's for design for villas and homes as well as the custom made mattresses for, for the yachts. So for me, um, the Balearic Islands and Barcelona, which I'm looking after as well, is so, is so vast that for me to try and take on all the projects I just become jack of all trades, masters of none. So I want to specialise in, you know, supplying mattresses to the boats that are currently here, and then let them, you know, let the big boys at Neptune look after their um, the manufacturers. However, I do have a lot of contacts as well. So I am dealing with management companies, and I will be dealing with villa management companies and things like that. So I'm going to be really, really, really busy. The first two months of the opening of the showroom have been really busy, and the Palmer 
um, what's it called, Palmer Boat Show. Right. We had an entry stand at the Palmer Boat Show. Yeah. We got four orders through that. Nice. Which is which is fantastic, and I've had my first recommendations as well, where clients have actually recommended other clients to me, which I think is wonderful. We've only been open for two and a half months, and a lot of people do know me. So you've made your reputation. <laughs> Good um, and bad. Uh, she's me, made it. Yeah, I won't tell you what they call me. No, I'm joking, but you know, mattress melders. <laughs> Okay, that's not... <laughs> in a good way. Yes, no, yeah. in a good way. It's like when you used to have Debbie Deckers. Do you remember Debbie Priest? Yes. I yeah. used to call her Debbie Deckers, and they say, "What uniform called Debbie Deckers?" Like yeah. everybody knew about that. So someone has nicknamed me Mattress Mel. <laughs> if you need a mattress. Well, one thing about these mattresses, though, is they do have a higher price point than you know, the average mattress that you could buy at, say, for example, Ikea. Are yeah. there other men, because I'm assuming that your mattresses, you actually have them custom built specifically for the yacht yes. when you have them put in. Yeah. Is there other companies that do the same thing? Not specifically, but in general, is there other companies that do the same? Well, New Yorker. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so your, your competition, it, it's, you know, you might come in at a higher price point, yes. but at the end of the day, you have a better product. I would say we have, um, we're very lucky to have exclusivity for um, Vita Tandelite Latex, which is exclusive to Neptune, but in the marine industry. Right. Um, and so no one on this island or the Balearic Islands or even Europe can actually supply it um, officially. So that is our USP. We have um, a unique comfort material and also the foam that we use, Pantera Nautic, is also specially made for Neptune. So even if they have a quote, it's still not like for like. Right. Because they're quoting the standard latex to Vita Talalines. Vita Talalai is more expensive, but it lasts three times as long. It's 100% natural process. It's high quantogenic. It's resistant to dust mites. It's IMO certified. It can be 100% recycled back to its original form, which we love in today's day and age that is so extremely important it's really important yeah obviously it comes from a rubber tree um the rubber tree